Today we're going to go through the key points of overwintering a hive. Hello, I'm Griff Reese. Welcome to Gwen and Griff. Here we talk everything beekeeping, farming, countryside living, and we do reviews as well. Now, today I'm going to go through the checklist or how to do or what to do list, whatever you want to call it, of wintering bees. Now, it's getting into winter here uh, at the time of recording this video, so we're starting to do our winter checks. Now, before we go into what you need to do to overwinter your hive, let's talk about what kills bees when they go into winter what are the main reasons that causes bee death so let's write that down here one of the biggest factors that kill bees in the winter is when the queen stops laying Another thing, a big factor is starvation. So if you haven't fed your bees enough or they're consuming the feed faster than most winters, say for example we get a mild winter, the bees are consuming the feed much quicker then the bees can starve to death. Another important factor is damp. Now the cold doesn't really kill the bees, it's when the bees get damp and that goes cold that's what kills the bees so you want to make sure we look at ventilation and insulation we go through that later on and then one of the biggest factors especially in the UK that kills bees is varora so the varora mites so now that we know what typically kills bees in the winter we can work out a checklist or what to do to try and reduce the risk of this happening in the winter. So let's look at the first thing, laying queen, when the queen stops laying. So before you go into winter, check your hive, give it a quick inspection to see if you can see eggs, brood, larva, etc. Make sure there's a viable queen in the hive. If there's no queen in the hive and this, there's no eggs, brood, larva, etc., chances is that hive is gonna die. So you don't wanna spend money to treat, the, treat that hive or feed it because that hive is going to die over the winter. The bees can't produce another queen over the winter. So they are gonna die. So the way around that is, is you unite two hives together. You unite the hive that's queenless with a hive that's queen right. Increase the numbers in that hive and chances are that hive will go through winter quite well. So let's sit down. Check for laying queen. Okay, so look at what else is a problem. Bees starving. So you want to feed your bees before going, to going into winter or you want to make sure they've got at least 15 kilo of either honey or feed. So the way to do it, and I'll go through all these points individually in another video, explaining in detail all these points I'm going to make today. So feeding your bees, make sure you feed your bees before going into the winter and you want that hive to be at least 15 kilos heavy. So 15 kilos of feed, minimum going into that hive. Now that can either be honey they've already got in the hive or that's all be feed that you're gonna feed your bees. So we write down 15 kgs of feed. The next thing is damp. Damp kills bees, wet bees are not gonna go through the winter. So check your hive, make sure the roof is dry, the timber work is in good order, that water is not gonna seep into the hive. Now, if like me, running most your timber hives on varora floors, then a key aspect to protect that hive from damp is to put insulation under the roof. Now, I like to use the insulation sheets, it's either the Kingspan or a similar make. You buy those in sheets, and cut that down to the same size as your crown board, put that on top of your crown board, roof back on, 
now damp is not going to affect that hive because the heat raising up is going to hit the insulation it's not going to hit the cold roof so it's not going to turn into water and drip down over the bees and that's going to keep the hive at optimum temperature make it a lot easier for the bees to stay warm and to keep that hive at the temperature that they require that to be so we check hive is water tight and add insulation now another killer like I mentioned is Varora so you want to treat your bees for Varora doesn't matter how you treat your bees or if you're lucky <coughs> some parts of the world you don't have to treat your bees your bees are either immune there's no Varora in that area or the bees can cope quite well with Varora unfortunately where I am in South Wales here if we didn't treat our bees for Varora we would probably lose the majority of the stocks we've got here so just like worming sheep or cattle you don't want to not worm them because the worms are going to kill that livestock and it's no different when it comes to bees the Varora mites they do kill the bees uh, either through direct infection by killing the bees by damaging the wings damaging the abdominums or through secondary infection when you've got a big mite chewing off the back creating a big open wound secondary infection infects the bees so what you want to do to avoid the varora we treat the varora so treat your bees that can either be uh, an apivar type treatment a strips apigard a thymol based treatment or oxalic acid type treatment doesn't matter what treatment you use whatever is best for you I'll go through in another video of the type of treatments I use when I treat my bees you want to try and rotate your treatment as well so it's just like worming sheep or cattle you rotate the different uh, worming so that you don't get mites or worms that's immune to the treatment it's exactly the same when it comes to Varora these mites can get immune to uh, different types of treatment so by rotating your treatments you uh, stop that resistance building up and just before you put the bees to bed you finish for the winter work you've done all this it's important to weigh your hive down so you're either going to strap your hive down to the hive stand so it can't blow off or you're going to put bricks or stones on top of the roof to stop that blowing away <clears throat> not so important with timber hives but with polystyrene that is an absolute must otherwise your roof is just gonna fly off so I'm just gonna put down here secure your hives I'm a big fan of putting big stones on the hive because straps the sun do does break them down and they can snap stones they do stay in place and once you have stones on your site they're there forever well that's it that's what causes bee deaths and this is the best way to reduce the chance of your bees dying in the winter now remember if your bees are going into winter say november time they've got the 15 kilos of feed on when it comes to january time you want to check your hives you want to heft every single hive there's a video on uh, my youtube explaining how to heft a hive check that out if you don't know how to do it so you just check the, the hive see what the weight is like if it's very heavy then there's no need to do anything else to it if that hive is light you don't want to be feeding syrup uh, midwinter when the temperatures are very very cold the bees are just not going to be bringing that down so you want to add fondant on roughly in january time that's when i check my bees uh, that's when i heft the hives more often than not as long as you get a good winter the 15 kilos of feed inside that hive is going to be ample till spring but if we do get a very very mild winter the bees are going to consume in that food a lot quicker and they might need a little extra top up well that's it thanks for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel click the subscribe button and click that bell notification so you're notified of when a new video is uploaded i try my best to put a new video out every week thanks for watching